Let's now talk about what happens in repeated measurements when we have a wave function which is a superposition of multiple eigenfunctions. So let's say we have this wave function here. Uh, it's square root of two-thirds psi one. Let's pretend this is the first eigenfunction of the particle in a box. And plus square root of one-third psi three. Let's pretend that's the third eigenfunction of particle in a box. So if we have our psi and then we make a measurement of the energy. So we are going to measure the value of the energy. There are going to be two different possibilities. We can either get the energy of the first eigenstate and because of this coefficient the probability is this coefficient squared so there is a two-thirds probability that that happens. Or, alternatively, <clears throat> the other possibility, we have to measure an eigenvalue. The only possible values for measurements are eigenvalues. So the other possibility is we get the energy of the third eigenstate. So we either get E1, which is h squared over 8 ml squared, or we get E3, which is 9 h squared over 8 ml squared. And because of this coefficient squared is one-third, we have a one-third probability <clears throat> of measuring E3. And you'll notice that these two probabilities sum to one, and that's good because that means that there is a 100% chance we measure one of these two values. And that also means we properly normalized our wave function. Okay, so we've talked about that previously. But now what happens if we measure each of these energies again? So now we are going to measure E a second time. <clears throat> and in each of these cases, we're looking at a conditional measurement. We're looking at this top line is, what if we measured E1 the first time and then we measure E again? What if we measure E3 the first time and then we measure E again? So we're going to write down what happens in each of those cases. So on the top here, you might think that, well, we measured E1 the first time, and if we measure again, we'll have the same thing. We'll get a two-thirds probability of measuring E1, and a one-third probability of measuring E3. Well, that's, that would be a reasonable guess, but that in fact turns out to be incorrect. What you will get is you'll get E1, and there is a 100% probability of getting E1. If you measure E1 the first time, and then you measure it again, you're going to get E1 again, and there is a 100% chance, a certainty, that you will measure E1 again. And similarly, if you measure the energy and you get E3, the energy of the third eigenstate, then measuring it again, there is a 100% chance that you get E3. And this extends to if we had four, five, a hundred different possibilities. Whatever we measure the first time, we're going to measure again the second time. So what is going on here? Well, this is the concept of wave function collapse. This is our initial wave function psi, which was a linear combination or a superposition of these two eigenfunctions. But once we measured the energy, the energy can only be one of the two, one of the possible eigenvalues. And when we measure that eigenvalue, the wave function is said to collapse into this eigenstate or this eigenfunction. So as soon as we measure E1, psi is no longer this superposition here, psi is only psi 1. It is The coefficient here is 1, and the coefficient for every other state is 0. And similarly, if we measure E3 first, then the wave function collapse collapses into the third eigenstate. And this coefficient is 1, every other coefficient is 0. So that's the, that's the concept of wave function collapse. So we can see very clearly here that once the wave function collapses into psi 1, if we measure the energy again, well, this coefficient is 1, so the only th possible eigenvalue we can get is E1, and there is a 100% chance that we measure that eigenvalue, because that is the entire wave function. Similarly, on the bottom, if our wave function collapses into the third eigenstate, then its coefficient is 1, and there is a 100% chance we measure the energy of that eigenstate again if we make the measurement again. So this idea of wave function collapse, of the wave function collapsing into an eigenstate upon measurement, 
that's uh, really dependent on which interpretation of quantum mechanics you have. So the this is the most uh, standard interpretation, uh, sometimes referred to the Copenhagen interpretation. You might hear this term at some point, so I'll just mention this so you know what that term might mean. So the Copenhagen interpretation is kind of the standard view of quantum mechanics of the wave function being a, a measure of probability density uh, or psi star psi being a probability density for where the particle might be and these coefficients being probabilities for the things you might measure in an experiment. And this is a source of intense debate among theoretical physicists. There is no one interpretation of quantum mechanics which has been experimentally verified to be um, correct in all of its claims. So that's that's a source of debate within the theoretical physics community, but for our purposes in, in most of these videos and the way quantum mechanics is taught to most chemistry students, we're just going to take the middle road and take this most common Copenhagen interpretation and accept that there might be certain shortcomings there and that that's not fully hashed out among um, among physicists, but we're just going to accept it and, and roll with the punches from there. So this is how we're going to view um, the act of measurement and the process of wave function collapse uh, whenever we're confronted with a situation where we have a wave function which is a superposition of states.